This video is sponsored by Ugreen. iOS 16.1 is officially available for download today, and it's the first major in-cycle release we've had for iOS 16. It includes a bunch of new features and also some bug fixes and performance enhancements as well. So let's go ahead, roll the intro, and jump into iOS 16.1. So I wanna get things started by talking about performance and stability. If I open up settings, you can see I'm running iOS 16.1 and the build is 20B79. So this is the final release build and this is the build that you guys are going to be updating to on your iPhones as well. I have had each beta of 16.1 on my iPhone and I can definitely say that as the betas progressed, it did get more stable. However, I still don't think that iOS 16.1 is that stable, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So you may be following me on Twitter, and if you are, you probably saw this thread I started where I said I'm gonna show every single bug I encounter in iOS. Now, while some of these bugs I shared were on iOS 16.1 beta, I still am experiencing these even on the final build of 16.1. And the first one is this one. So whenever my phone is in landscape mode and I pull down from the top to see my notifications, half the time I'm not able to see the weather widget above the clock. It's just completely covered up with this white bar. So tell me in the comments if you are experiencing this as well. It's really frustrating how I'm not able to see my widgets whenever my phone is in landscape mode. The other one is this one here inside of notes. So whenever I have a chart, half the time whenever I open up the note, the formatting is completely off. And I've actually been experiencing this all the way back to like iOS 14 or iOS 15. This is a huge issue inside of notes. I don't know why the formatting is this glitchy, but it really shouldn't behave this way. And then the final bug I experienced, this was actually just an hour ago, is every time I open the weather app in the morning, my screen sits on this blank page. And it's not like it sits here for two or three seconds and then eventually loads. It sits here on this blank page for probably 10, 15, 20, 25 seconds. So the weather app seems to have a whole bunch of issues in the background and this really needs to be fixed. However, even with all of these bugs, I still do feel that iOS 16.1 is still more stable than iOS 16.0.3, and that's because of the severity of the bugs. So on 16.0.3, I experienced gigantic bugs, such as severe battery drain and even massive overheating of my iPhone. And the bugs on 16.1 I'm seeing are smaller UI type glitches. So I definitely say that 16.1 is indeed more stable than iOS 16.0.3. And iOS 16.1 also includes a bunch of new user features, and we're gonna show you everything new right after a quick message from our sponsor. This IDB video is proudly sponsored by our friends over at Ugreen. Ugreen's Nexode 45 watt mini charger covers all of your needs for portable devices. It features two USB-C ports and can charge two devices simultaneously. Compared to Apple's dual charger, the Nexo mini charger offers higher wattage out of both ports for much faster charging. All of this is in a package that's much more ergonomic and also more affordable than Apple's offering. It also features gallium nitride technology. You may have heard this phrase before, so why is this important? Well, gallium nitride is a much better conductor of electricity and can also live in a smaller package than a traditional silicone transistor. This means the charger won't get nearly as hot when you're using it. To get gallium nitride technology in Apple's official charger, you have to buy the bulky 140 watt charger for $100. So I know which one I'm gonna choose every single day. So I've been using Ugreen products long before they even sponsored us on YouTube. And this is honestly the best kind of sponsorship you can ask for when you get to promote a product that you genuinely like to use. Ugreen's Nexode mini charger is honestly my go-to now for charging all of my devices. And if you wanna check it out, you can click the first link in the description down below. And special thanks again to Ugreen for sponsoring us on YouTube. The first major new feature I want to show you and possibly the flagship feature of this release is iCloud Shared Photo Library. So this is a new feature that essentially allows you to have two photo libraries in your iPhone at the same time. One personal and one shared with anybody you want. If I open up settings, I'll show you how this works. So tap on photos. And then you can see here, we have a new option called shared library. I have added myself as a participant, just as an example in this video. Now, when I open up the photos app, you can see it essentially looks the same as it did before. You can unveil some new options, however, if you tap on the button at the top right, this menu icon. 
So we can view a mix of our shared and personal. We can view both. We can view the personal library on its own and also the shared library on its own. So if I switch over to the shared library, you can see I'm only able to see three photos. And that's because during the setup of this shared library, I chose specifically which photos I wanted to share. You can choose to share your entire library. You can choose to share specific photos as I did in this example, or you can choose to share no photos at all and only add them to the shared library based on a new toggle in the camera. And I'll also show you that in a bit. So when you're in this shared library, you can see we have an icon here at the top right indicating which library you're in. And you can also see that each photo individually has that icon as well. And if you want to move a photo in the shared library back to just your personal library, so say for example you added it by accident, you can click on the photo and then click on this icon right here and then choose move to personal library. Now inside the camera app, I'm able to show you that toggle I was talking about. So at the top left, you can see we have an option here, and this is going to allow us to change which library the photo that we're about to take is going to be stored. You can also access this toggle by swiping up, and it lives all the way at the end right here. I have it turned off right now, so every photo I take is gonna go into my personal library. So if I take a photo here, and then go into photos. Because I'm viewing the shared library, that photo I just took doesn't show up. However, if I go back to camera and I change this to my shared library and then I quickly snap a photo, if I go back to photos, you can see that photo now shows up in the shared library. And another really cool feature is this toggle that I just showed you inside of camera can actually be turned on automatically by the system. So you can turn this on inside of settings. If you tap on sharing from camera, if you have this on automatically, then your iPhone using Bluetooth is gonna detect when members of that shared photo library are around you and it'll turn on that toggle for you. The next change in 16.1 has to do with editing and customizing your current wallpapers. So this new behavior in 16.1 is so much better in terms of customizing your home screen wallpapers. Now on your lock screen, whenever you press and hold on the wallpaper and then press on customize, you're now able to choose if you wanna customize the lock screen or the home screen. Previously, the method of editing your home screen wallpaper was quite confusing, so this is a lot better in iOS 16.1. And we also do have some great changes to the wallpaper settings page itself. So first up is we can now see all of our wallpapers on our iPhone right from within wallpaper settings. And if we want to, we can also change our wallpaper right from inside here. So this is my wallpaper right now. And if I click on set as current for this one, you can see I'm able to change my wallpaper right from within settings. And also just as we saw on the lock screen before, each one of these wallpapers has its own customized button as well. The next change in 16.1 has to do with the battery indicator in the status bar. So it is now actually live and the indicator is going to represent your current battery level. I really like this change as before it looked like your battery was always full, but now the actual battery icon is going to fall throughout the day and it's going to represent what your actual battery level is. And also new in iOS 16.1, this battery indicator is now coming to all iPhones. So before this was not supported on iPhone 10R, iPhone 11, and the mini size iPhones, but now with iOS 16.1, every single iPhone gets this new battery indicator. We also have a new toggle in app store settings. So under automatic downloads, you can turn on in-app content. So what this is gonna do is whenever you download an application for the first time, if this toggle is turned on, it's gonna allow the system to start downloading assets from inside that application before you even open it. So if you have this turned on, it's gonna make new apps on your iPhone launch a lot faster. This next one was a highly requested feature and I think a lot of you are going to be happy that Apple has brought this back. So now in iOS 16, whenever your iPhone is on the lock screen and it's charging, for the first two to three seconds after you wake up your display, your iPhone is going to show your iPhone's battery level right above the time. This was actually the original behavior in iOS 15, and for whatever unknown reason, Apple took this away in the first release of iOS 16. So like I said, this was a highly requested feature, and it's now back in iOS 16.1 iOS 16.1 also finally supports the Live Activities API. This means that developers can now update their application for the App Store to support Live Activities. There's actually an application that supports this already. It's called Sports Alerts. So if I go to a game that I wanna follow, 
and then tap the menu icon, I can start a live activity for this game. And now when I go home, because I have the iPhone 14 Pro, that live activity is now gonna show right in the island of my iPhone. However, if you don't have a 14 Pro, you can still see the live activity all the time on your lock screen. And for the iPhone 14 Pro, if you have a live activity in your island, you can still have multiple things happening in the background while still seeing that live activity from a third-party app. So here is my timer, and if I go home, you can see I have my timer on the left, and I can still keep track of this live activity on the right. And after you update to iOS 16.1, I would recommend periodically checking your app updates, as a lot of your applications may be getting updated to support live activities. I think one I'm most looking forward to is DoorDash. That way I'll be able to track my food delivery right from the island on my iPhone. Another change in 16.1 that I think is new because I didn't see it before is inside of music. So in your AirPlay settings, when you switch to a pair of AirPods or Beats headphones, the icon at the bottom of your now playing screen is actually gonna represent the pair of headphones you have connected. Another change in 16.1, this one is pretty small, but you're now able to completely delete the wallet application. Before, you were only able to remove it from your home screen, but if you're someone who doesn't use the wallet app at all, you can now completely delete it from your iPhone. We also have a slight change for the screenshot menu. If I take a screenshot and then click on the done text on the top left, this action sheet used to come out of the bottom of our iPhone, now it comes out of the top left. The next improvement is for those of you who have an iPhone 14 Pro. In iOS 16.1, the Face ID animation coming out of the island is now a lot faster. So for an example, if I open up my banking application here and then I sign in, you can see just how fast that Face ID animation is. Another improvement, this one is again for the iPhone 14 Pro. The dynamic island now finally supports landscape orientation. So if I take my ring switch and I go from ring to silent, as you can see, the island is finally correct in terms of its orientation. And I'll also give you one more example. So if I go ahead and I take my iPhone out of do not disturb, you can see the island reflects in its proper orientation. And one more very small change for the iPhone 14 Pro on 16.1, whenever the island is being used for anything, it's now gonna have a very slight outline when you have a black background on your iPhone. Okay, so I thought I was done with changes on the island, but I found one more, and this one is honestly kind of funny to me. Whenever you activate reachability, the island now comes down in software. Even though the island itself is hardware on the 14 Pro, Apple felt the need to replicate the island in software whenever you use reachability. So this is kind of funny. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments below. And iOS 16.1 also fixes that really annoying animation glitch for the lock screen music player. So before, whenever you would tap on the album art to view this full screen player, the UI at the bottom would glitch out a bit, but here in iOS 16.1, the animation works as expected. And one final change I discovered in iOS 16.1 is if you have haptic feedback turned on for the keyboard, Apple has actually lessened the intensity of this effect. So when you're typing now on iOS 16.1, you won't feel as much haptic feedback as you felt before. So that's gonna do it for everything new in iOS 16.1. I want you to head down to the comments now and tell me what your favorite new feature is I talked about in this video. I think for me, it's a toss up between the Live Activities API and also iCloud Shared Photo Library. Make sure to comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. If you guys found this video informative and helpful, please give us a like. And also, if you're not yet subscribed, make sure to click the button down below and help us get to our goal of 400,000 subscribers. With all that said, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks to you green for sponsoring us. My name is Michael and I'll see you next time.